interesting, this time of the year, kind of the team's broken up into a couple different parts. So first of all, we have our travel squad who's training twice a week. So they'll train Mondays and Wednesdays. Focus with them is maintaining their strength, make sure they're fully recovered enough for the, for the next game. The rest of the team, guy, older guys that don't travel and first year guys are in more of a strength building phase. Um, we treat the, the in season as a mini off season. Um, so we gotta take advantage of the time we have with them to get them stronger so that they are prepared to contribute in the future. So outside of getting them uh, warmed up and making sure their, uh, their bodies are where they need to be in terms of being ready to play, our biggest responsibilities are making sure they're, they're, they're fueled properly at halftime, making sure they're hydrated, and just their, their mental aspect, you know, keeping them up during the games and making sure their, their, their thought process and their minds are where they need to be on game day. Pennsylvania, Beaver Stadium, Big Ten football, Iowa, and the Nittany Lions of Penn State coming up in about a half an hour. We're going to have to run against these guys. It's been tough every year. They do a lot of gap stuff with their down linemen, so it's not going to be easy, but we're going to have to keep trying to establish the run if we want to win today. On, on defense, we got to keep up what we've been doing, play real physical on the line of scrimmage. Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Two receivers right, one to the short side of the field. They try to run Parker or Devin Ford wide and he's dropped in the backfield. A heck of a play coming clean was Chauncey Golston. Spencer's in the gun. He's back to pass. Good protection. Rifles one over the corner or over the middle, and it's caught for a first down at the 40-yard line. I mean, what a catch by Laporta from 41 yards out. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick is long enough, and it is good. Inside the right upright, the Hawks have a 3-0 lead. Third down almost seven at the Hawkeye 18. Levis makes the call. He's back to pass. No, nope. quarterback run again. Look at this. Wide open. 10, five yard line. First and goal after a gain of 12 on third down and seven by quarterback Will Levis. He has been sparkling here on this drive. Here's the draw hand up. Touchdown, Penn State. Right down the middle. Kayvon Lee. Petrus is in the gun. Fake on the draw hand up to Goodson. A rifle pass and a slot receiver slant caught by Tyrone Tracy. One running back is Goodson. They play fake it to him. A rollout right, wide open, heading downfield at the 45-50 is Sean Beyer into Penn State territory at the 45-yard line. First and 10. Hawks marching right back downfield after the Penn State touchdown. Here's a big hole through it. Run Sargent. He's at the 20. 15, 10, 5, and rolled out of bounds at the three-yard line. The Hawks will have first and goal as the first quarter comes to an end. Let's see if the Hawks can rally back here. Back out at the 10. They run a, a counter handoff. Five-yard line into the uh, pylon. Is he over? Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. What a call. Tyler Goodson. It is. Good stop, Good stop, Good stop, Good stop, Good stop, 10-7 Hawks. Now let's see if the defense can hold serve. They're going to sweep to the right side. And so far, so good as the Hawks plow through. Davion Nixon blew up the uh, blocking scheme. Receiver right, one running back, a tight end. Here's Levis on the toss pitch. It's fumbled, and Penn State's going to go down and get the ball. It's still loose. Now the Hawkeyes do have it, I think. Iowa's, I think the Hawkeyes, they do. Oh, a little indecision by Will Levis leads to a Penn State fumble. 
Hawks with trips to the right. Petrus looking that way. Hit as he throws. It's caught inside the 20. You know what? If it works the first time, go back to Nico Regini. <laughs> and he's got a first down inside the 20 near the 15. He will catch the ball in traffic, huh? Who's Petrus looking for? Looks right, comes back to the middle. It's caught near the goal line. Is it over for a touchdown? Touchdown, touchdown Sam Laporta. Yeah, I think they're going to call this down at the one-yard line. It looks like on the replay that his knee actually hits the ground. Fire goes in motion. Here's Petrus. They pitch it to Sargent. Can he get to the goal line first? He does! He beats the blue shirts there. They sold inside run, and Sargent scores a touchdown, Iowa. Fourth down and one. They're going to go for it. And you can bet this is a quarterback keeper. Somehow, some way. Long snap count, and here he comes. Quarterback draw. He's grabbed by Kerner and thrown back. I mean, when the dumb play-by-play -play announcer knows it's either going to be a quarterback draw or a sneak, Jack Kerner certainly would know that, and he got him on a safety blitz. Yeah. Under two minutes to go, first half. Iowa leading by 10. Straight back to pass. No pressure. Now the pocket collapses and a sack by Jack Heflin. Fourth down. They're going to go for it again, or at least they're showing it. Back to pass. His levis. He overthrows the intended receiver, and the Hawks get it again on downs. Hawks have second and one at the Penn State 40. They can call anything here with two timeouts. 45 seconds ago. Here comes a blitz. Get rid of it, Spencer. He does. And it's caught to a wide open. Amir Smith gets the corner turn 30, 25 yard line, and rushed out of bounds there. Hawks go two tight ends, one single wide out in Amir Smith. They're going to run straight ahead. Easy it goes. Touchdown, Iowa. Makai Sargent. They blew him off the left side of the line. How can you make a hole that big at the goal line? Hey! The Heartland is brought to you by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. High V proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Levis now back to pass. Hawks close in on him. He's hit from behind. The ball's loose. Ball's out. And who got on it? Did the Hawks get there first? I think they did. Iowa has the football. <laughs> and it's Zach Van Valkenburg. He recovered it. First and 15. Play fake. Quick slant. Caught at the 15-yard line. Two yards shy of a first down. Spencer Petrus to Brandon Smith. Here's Spencer. Empty backfield. Looks left. Throws right. It's caught. And it looks like a first down. Short throw to the 12. Why not go to money? Sam Laporte. Petrus will He's quarterback sneak, and he gets into the end zone with a push in the butt from the tailback. Touchdown, Iowa. Spencer Petrus got a shove in the backside. And here's the snap to the quarterback, making his first start. Hawks get to him. Down he goes. Campbell knocks it loose. That's a fumble fallen on by Penn State. And Penn State's going to try and take advantage of it. Here's Levis throwing up the sideline. Caught 10-yard line, 5-yard line, tight end into the end zone. Touchdown. A one-play touchdown pass. He's going to throw it on first down. Steps back, goes down the middle of the field. Has a man open. It is caught at the 10-yard line to the 5, to the goal line. Touchdown, Penn State. Are you kidding me? Wow. Clifford. Leans in, yells something. Here comes the blitz off the edge. They pick it up. He throws the pass is deflected up and maybe intercepted. It is intercepted. And I think Chauncey Golston got it. I think Chauncey has it. Iowa football. There's the turnover we were asking for. And now they'll have to settle for Duncan's field goal, which is right through almost a, well, it is a chip shot from 24 yards for Keith Duncan. So that extends the Iowa lead to 34-21. Back to pass. Picked off. Intercepted. And lumbering the other way is Davion Nixon. 40, you got to see this to believe it. He's going to score a touchdown. He's going to score a touchdown. What athleticism. Davion Nixon picks off Sean Clifford. And 
Davion Nixon, how about the moves he put on Sean Clifford? Angled near the Iowa sideline, circled back to the center of the field, and then rotated back to the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa! Touchdown, Nixon! <laughs> About a hard place to win, Kurt tells the story about one of the first wins he had was right here, and that's when this program started to turn the corner. And it's been, that's been about 20 years ago. 10 years ago is the last time we won here. 100 wins in the Big Ten. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed, feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. That really is uh, one of the building blocks of our whole program, going back 22 years ago. I think that was one of our prominent uh, focuses was to make sure we had the best uh, strength conditioning program available for our athletes. And, and uh, you know, it's such a huge part of the development of uh, any athlete in any sport, quite frankly, especially football. But uh, I think it's important in all sports. I think everybody's kind of realized the importance of that over the last couple of decades. So that, that was a, a really key focus for us. And, uh, you know, if you look at our program historically, we've really dedicated the time and the resources necessary to make sure that our players had the best available, uh, you know, opportunities in the strength conditioning field. I took a, a strength conditioning class as an undergrad back in 1998 and that first ex gave me the exposure to strength conditioning and the thought that this could actually be a career path. Um, my first exposure to collegiate strength conditioning was at Florida State University as an intern in the fall of 2001 and, and that really was a great experience. I learned a lot and um, that eventually led me to the University of Iowa. Yeah, we always, always felt like we had a really good program and uh, Ray's been in the program for quite some time, so he knows, knows it inside and out. Uh, has made his share of contributions through the years, no question about it. And uh, this really has been an opportunity for him to step forward and, and take a leadership role. And I think he's done a great job of that. Uh, you know, and it's like anything with anybody, uh, when you replace someone who is very good and Ray's done that, um, you know, he, he wanted to follow the blueprint per se. But also my encouragement to Ray was, you got to do it in your own personality, with your own personality, and uh, you know, be comfortable and be your authentic self. And anytime you take a new job, there's a, a new, you know, there's a process or a, a period you go through where you, you know, have to feel your way around a little bit and kind of, kind of get comfortable with the message that you're trying to send and the way you send it. And yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think we've seen that with Ray. He's done a great job with our guys. In, in very challenging circumstances, if you think about the pandemic, the quarantines, all the things that have gone on. Uh, since June when our players returned. It's been a really unusual period. And I think he's handled it extremely well and has done a great job with his staff as well. I think they all seem to be on the same page. They're all together and uh, that is important because you know they're the ones working with our players on a daily basis. Yeah, it really doesn't matter when they get here, if you're a four star, five star, two star, it matters what they you do when you get here. And we, we've done an excellent job of identifying the right people that buy into being humble, hardworking and, and really hungry and in terms of wanting to improve as football players and, and student athletes. And that's that's the biggest thing is identifying the right people, bringing them in and challenging them when they get here. Well, everyone, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. Everyone has a different set of parents. Everyone has a different genetic background, different training background. So when we get them here, we take them through a full functional movement screen to see how their body works and to see what, what areas we need to address. Um, we're trying to develop better athletes, so we have to we have to kind of individualize our, our program design and, and what the individual athlete needs to kind of help them improve. Well, we have to you know apply what we've learned from the past and keep on continuing to evolve. Um, the the strength conditioning field is ever changing from year to year, 
So it's on us to stay on the cutting edge and getting out and, and talking to the, the best of what they do in the field in order for us to be able to apply that to, to Iowa football and to continue our success in what we do. It's the people. It's the opportunity to work with kids and, and help them to achieve their goals. Um, it's really it's really an impactful profession because you're in, in the changing lives business. Uh, we spend more time with athletes than anybody else on campus, so we de really develop a, a great relationship with them and, and seeing them blossom and, and improve from like 18-year-old, 19-year-old freshmen to 22-year-old seniors is, is very fulfilling and rewarding. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. It was just a crazy play, just uh, from top to bottom. You know, coach called the blitz. I knew I had a chance and it was kind of crazy because during that week, uh, ones versus ones at the end of practice, uh, I had a blitz, the same thing. And I beat the left tackle, made the sack, and it all stemmed back from, you know, uh, AJ, he teaching me a move to, you know, uh, try to get the alignment off balance. And, it, and, uh, and you know, it came came uh, to fruition in the game. A really good call by Coach Brian. Um, those are pretty easy for me. I just, you know, lean forward and uh, Tyler and, um, you know, the guards, you know, Cody, Justin, Shooter, whoever's in there. Uh, they take care of the rest, so it makes my job easy. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely a nice play. I had to contain the quarterback, but I knew like they'd been throwing the ball to this flat this like the whole time, and they were driving the ball down the field. And I was just like mad because like I play Madden a lot, and so when I play with my roommate Imani Jones, um, he does like things like that. He'll make quick throws, short throws, and he'll keep completing it until you change, until you stop it. And so I'm like, they're gonna go back to it because we haven't stopped it all game. So as soon as he threw it, I just like, I did my assignment. I got to where I was supposed to be, but I just kind of like bagged up away from the line a little bit. And I just jumped, threw my hands up and grabbed it out the air. And I just started running. I kind of just assumed that he was gonna go for the ball, which he did. He tried to like grab the ball and swap it out of my hand. So that's why it was a, a nice over, over the top of his head with the ball, with the Euro step. But after that, I just knew like, I had to just keep running. And so then and I cut back left, just so that way, if the running back had a chance, he would have to, you know, fight between him and the quarterback to see who gets the tackle. And then I was just in the end zone. It was like, it was, okay, so like there was a moment after I scored where everyone's like surrounding you. And then boom, you're like, your oxygen level goes down, your adrenaline's running, running, everyone's hitting you. I had to take my helmet off because I couldn't breathe. And everyone's like, they, I took my helmet off, so there's no smacking on the head anymore. They're smacking my stomach, my chest, my back. They're saying, good job. And I'm just like, all right, I'm pretty sick to my stomach now. <laughs> it's like, I just ran pretty far. I can't breathe. And everyone's just like surrounding me. I'm like, if, if you guys don't move, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Matt, Matt, like he just ran up and like, I was telling everyone to move. And then I was trying to tell Matt, like, no, like, don't do it. But like, I was covering my mouth because I didn't want to throw up on Matt. And then he tried to chest pump me and it was just too late. I was just spitting out water. <laughs> From that point on, it was bad. This week's Heart of the Hawkeyes feature is Joe Tortrich, who attended his first game in 1978. Joe's first Hawkeye game was actually by accident. A friend of his had an extra ticket to the Wisconsin-Iowa game at Kinnick Stadium, so he went. He describes it as an experience and a half. At that point, he knew he had to come back to Iowa City. Each time he came to a homecoming game, Joe made it a tradition to get his wife Jan an Iowa-themed stuffed bear and a homecoming pin, memorabilia that holds a true special place in their hearts. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.